13 WMAZ morning starts now. We've got storms on the way to central Georgia over the next 48 to 72 hours. When it's going to impact you, coming up. That's why we're trying to provide good skills for them and good jobs for them and good mentors for them. We update you on the Making Violence Prevention Program and why some people are criticizing its benefits in the community. Why when the incident happened, they didn't call 911. They didn't call me, she's pouring blood. A fight at Trutland Middle High School leaves the mom with more questions than answers. Coming up, we have a statement from the school and details from the mom. Plus, a Macon man dies after being shot back in October. We break down the latest on the investigation. Well, good Tuesday morning, Central Georgia. You're taking a live look over the Georgia National Fairgrounds. The time is now 6.30 a.m. here on this December the 13th. I don't know about you, but I have a feeling that today is going to be a great day. I'm Wanye Reese. And I'm Caitlin Egg. We are certainly going to hope so. We got the gang back together. We got the yes. fog out of here this morning. I think we're set up for a pretty good day, Alex. That's right. You know, it's a banner day when the four of us are here on the same day in December because for our schedules to overlap like <laughs> that, it's not every day that happens. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> and that's going to about do it. <laughs> Here's a live look over the Georgia National Fairgrounds this morning. We've got temperatures in the 50s all across the board. 52 in Perry, we've got 52 in Macon, 53 in Byron, 51 in Fort Valley, 46 up in Monticello this morning, and 50 in Sparta and in Sandersville. No fog out there. Did you notice you can see the clock tower this morning as well? I'll work your way back out towards the west, running into a far different story. That's our next front out there beginning to take shape. That's going to work its way not only across the southeast, but across the the eastern two thirds of the country over the next few days and going to bring some storms here to central Georgia. Meanwhile, today though, still dealing with the overcast skies, a high temperature of only about 55 or so that's going to come later on this afternoon. Sunrise at 728 with a few scattered showers and it is going to be overcast once again. But there is a light at the end of the tunnel on the flip side of this front. Quite literally, the sun is going to come out and we are going to be clearing out for the weekend. Everything you need to know, including an hour by hour look at future view is just a few minutes away. All right, thank you, Alex. Our top story overnight, the Bibb Coroner's Office identified a body found on Thomaston Road in Macon last week. Coroner Leon Jones identified the man as 23-year-old Dukazo Kiffian Howard, also known as Destin. Well, the Sheriff's Office says he was shot to death and died on the scene. Anyone with information on the shooting should call the Macon Regional Crime Stoppers at 1-877-68-CRIME. That number again, it's right there at the bottom of your screen. It's 1-877-68-CRIME. All right, now Mayor Lester Miller announced what he calls a banner year of job expansion and growth at a Macon Bibb Industrial Authority event. But some people in Macon are questioning if the Macon Violence Prevention Program is making a difference. Macon Bibb has now seen its 68th homicide this year, breaking last year's record of 55. It's a growing issue Macon Bibb leaders say they've seen as well. Last year, they started the Macon Violence Prevention Program with several initiatives. They range from free mental health care to after school programs to mentorship and job opportunities. Making Bib Mayor Lester Miller says it's not an overnight process that you can't look at the homicide rate to decide if MVP works. Instead, he says it's about creating a culture where people can get the help, experience and opportunities they need. Unfortunately, when you get to the ages where you have a young, young adult or a middle aged adult that's already involved in crimes and things of that nature, uh, the only outreach you get to have is, is at the uh, with the penal system. And uh, that's why we're trying to provide good skills for them and good jobs for them and good mentors for them. Mayor Miller says that job growth is one of the best ways to help teens and young adults avoid crime. Now the mayor says crime on the whole is down compared to the first half of the year. 6.33 on your Tuesday morning. This morning, the pedestrian killed after being hit in Bleckley County has been identified. The accident happened at the intersection of State Route 87 and Broadhead Road in Cochran over the weekend. Shadaline St. Louis was standing in the roadway between the left and right northbound lanes when a car hit that pedestrian. The driver said she was traveling behind another car when the car made an abrupt right turn as if the driver was trying to avoid something. Another driver hit the pedestrian saying he saw the body in the road and was unable to avoid it. A man who was shot in Macon two months ago died from his injuries yesterday. On October the 3rd, Bibb County deputies say someone shot a 48 year old Craig Page in his left leg on Rice Mill Road. Corner Leon Jones says Page died around 3 o'clock Monday morning. Well, if you're a parent who drops your kid off at school, you often don't know what actually goes on between those walls. One mother says she learned about a life changing moment that turned her world upside down. Our morning reporter TJ Anthony joins us live in studio with more details. Good morning, TJ. Good morning, that's right. Jacqueline Johnson says a fight at Trutland Middle High School left her 12-year-old daughter not only physically hurt, but also emotionally damaged. 
She says she left the school the day it happened with more questions than answers. I went to the gym bathroom and was spitting up blood and just wiping my lip and my eye with a napkin. That's 12-year-old Journey Johnson describing what happened after a fight last month with a 16-year-old boy in Trutland Middle High School. We were in a gym and he was talking about something. I don't even know what he was talking about. But jokingly, I said that wasn't true. And he just got all mad and told me to shut the F up and came up there putting his hands over my mouth. And I was acting in a way of self-defense by pushing his hands back. And he just started punching me in my face, punching me in my eye, my jaw, my lip. Trutland County Sheriff Thomas Corbin sent us a statement about the case. He said a fight occurred at the school between a 16 and 12 year old. The school suspended the 16 year old. An investigation was conducted and the sheriff's office filed a juvenile complaint. The 16 year old was charged with simple battery. Journey Johnson was treated for bruises on her face and forehead at Memorial Health Meadows Hospital in Vidalia. Jacqueline Johnson, Journey's mom, has many questions, but here's one of the big ones. Why, when the incident happened, they didn't call 911. They didn't call me. She's pouring blood. She says she found out not from the school, but from another student about 20 minutes after the fight. Another student snuck in the bathroom and gave me a call and said, Ms. Um, Ms. Jackie, Journey just got attacked and she's pouring blood in the bathroom and she's crying. Nope. I said, did anybody go in there to check on her? She was like, no. The Trutland Middle School also sent us a statement. They said parents are always contacted promptly after attending to the immediate needs of a student if a student is hurt for any reason. In this particular case, the parent contacted the school and spoke with the school officials moments after the incident took place. Journey is still shaken and has not been to the school since the fight. It's been about two weeks. It's hard to have him look in the mirror at and the pain that's in my jaw because it's still swollen, and I hate have seen that scar there every morning. Now the principal says consequences for students are different depending on their past behavior. For fighting the first offense calls for a three-day suspension. However, due to the ages of the students involved for this case, he says he also made a report on the behalf of the school to quote the appropriate governmental agency. Caitlin, back to you. Thank you, TJ. Now the school is a middle and high school combined. We'll have much more on the story on 13WMAZ.com later on this morning. This week, election officials across the state will begin auditing last week's election results. The Secretary of State's office will randomly select batches of ballots from the U.S. Senate race. County election officials will begin auditing the selected batches tomorrow, and counties will post the date, time, and location of their audits on their county election website. We tell you about how Macon Bib commissioners plan to look at the progress of the Macon Mall and give you a closer look at changes in the past two decades. Plus, we bring you to a city in Finland where you can see Santa every day of the year. Stick with us while we show you the place where tourism is booming. The time is 6.38 here on this beautiful Tuesday morning. I think Alex Forbes would love to take a trip to that place <laughs> so he could see Santa every day. I would say that would be his happy place right there. <laughs> Live from Finland tomorrow morning. Tune in. There we go. Hey, only if you take us with you. Come on, we're, we're going to take the whole show on the road. Christmas is Alex's love language. <laughs> yeah. <is> so <laughs> if Alex could get away with decorating in July, I think he probably would. Definitely. She wouldn't come down. The, the Christmas tree would just be here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's, uh, it, I think uh, this Christmas is going to be different, though, because I think it's actually going to feel like Christmas here in Georgia this year. I don't think we're going to be dealing with the 70s. I think it's actually going to be closer to the 50s for high temperatures and overnight lows in the 30s, certainly leading up to it. Here's a live look over Dublin this morning. You can see Dublin. We don't have any fog out there. We are still dealing with overcast skies, though. A light wind out of the east at about eight miles an hour. We've got 52 in Warner Robins, 53 in Cochrane, 54 over McRae, 50 in Sandersville. Cooler stuff up towards the north, sitting at 49 in Atlanta and 42 over in Athens this morning. Nothing here on our radar picture. Well, let's take a look back out towards the west. We are running into some issues out there in the form of some severe weather, and that's interesting. There are actually three tornado warnings right towards the Dallas area. Tornado watch extending back into Oklahoma as well. This whole weather system, including the rain up towards Kansas City, the snow up in the Dakotas, and then the snow back out in Colorado, that's all working its way across the country here over the next few days. So we're going to catch the tail end of it in the form of some storm. So let's map out the details here on future view overcast this morning. One or two scattered showers out there. But then notice as we head through the day today, I think we could see a few breaks in the clouds, but mainly down to the south and east. I'm talking about Pulaski County over towards Eastman, over towards Vidalia. 
up here in central Georgia. I think we're going to hang on to the overcast stuff through a majority of the day. Then into tomorrow morning, overcast still across the area, one or two showers. And then once we get into the overnight hours, this is when the front's going to come through. Here's 1 a.m. and play this through the overnight uh, period of heavy rainfall as the front comes through. There we are at about 6 a.m. And then notice we begin to clear out behind it. So the sun will return Thursday afternoon here in central Georgia as soon as we can get those storms out of here. As the storms do come through, they are going to pose a severe weather risk out to the west. A level three day today in Texas, Louisiana and Mississippi. That shifts to the east a little bit for Wednesday. Tomorrow includes parts of Alabama and Florida. But then once we get to Thursday, this is when Georgia comes into play. Parts of our area in a level one risk, the level two down to the southeast. And to be quite honest with you, I'm really just am not concerned about a severe weather threat as we head into Thursday morning. Could we see a rumble of thunder? Sure. I just don't think the uh, dynamics are going to be there to get any severe storms. One to two, maybe even three inches of rain in a few spots. Higher rainfall totals the further west you get. It really just depends on where these bands set up of the heaviest rainfall where the most will occur. Out the door today, look for temperatures to warm into the 50s. I'm forecasting a high of 55, so not warming up all that much. Thanks to those overcast skies. Our average high for today is 62, so not coming close to that. Overcast once again, sunrise is at 728. So an 80% chance of rain tomorrow. The storms Thursday morning and then a major cool down after that. A high of only 58 there on Friday. And from Friday on out, overnight lows in the 30s, afternoon highs in the 50s for the Christmas parade on Sunday here in downtown Macon. A high temperature of only 50 itself. As we go to break, I want you to check this out. A dog barely managed to keep its head above the snow in Alaska after Storms left several feet of white snow yesterday. Just look at them go. It's having a good old time. Be sure to stay with us. We have more news and weather coming your way after this.